Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's video in which we are going to start a new series in that we are looking into the new features of Octane 2025 and Octane 2026. Since this is an alpha and a beta version, we are going to look at this in the standalone. Today I fiddled around with rest position quite a bit to show it to you, so a lot of the time already is wasted. So this video probably is very short. So without further ado, let's grab your coffee as always and let's jump in. I acknowledge that this one might be a bit exotic. So let's do a quick overview what rest position actually is. And no, it's not the position you are sleeping in. The TLDR is you're lazy and don't want to do UVs. To avoid seams on your 3D texture, you go to the projection and set it to XYZ to UVW, but then you remember your object is a bendy wiener and all is for naught because the texture is moving through the object. But worry not, there's a new setting in town that might save you, the rest attribute. Now you can use the object and bend it and your 3D noise will move with it. If you're now, I don't like noises, I stick with my trusted triplanar mapping to avoid the seams here, then good news again, we have the rest attributes for triplanar as well. So we can seamlessly blend and move objects at the same time now. And if you're not interested into practical, useful texturing applications, this is no problem at all, we can do MoGraph as well. So for example, those bolts here will align at 150 frames with the pattern and then before and after that this align. So it's a cool new feature that is probably much more useful than you might have thought when you first heard it. Alrighty, let's first answer the question where you can get your beta build. It's very easy, on the Utoy website go on the forum. Then if you scroll down a little bit, you have to be locked in to see that. You see the development build releases if we click on that. Right at the top of the page, you can see the 2025 beta and 2026 alpha version. If we click on one of those and scroll through all the features, features we are also going to talk about in our videos, and then scroll further along, at some point you find the download links. If what happened in the past holds true, there will be beta versions for Cinema 4D and Blender of the beta builds, but as of this point in time, there's only the standalone. So we'll be going to work with this. Welcome to Cinema 4D land real quick. Before we jump into the standalone, let's talk about the data generation or how you get your scene going inside of the standalone. And basically the best way to do that is to jump in your favorite 3D app and do a scene there, as I did this cloth animation here. I opted for a cloth animation as the rest position is working with point transformations. Of course, as always, if you're interested in the scene, this will be available on my Patreon. But we came here to export, so let's do this. We can export by actually going to the render settings here, and it's the same way you export an Orbix for the render network, if you're familiar with that. Before we care about the Orbix exporter, let's real quick go to the output and see if we have the right frame range. You won't believe how often I export a frame range from zero to zero. As this seems to be fine, let's go back to the Octane render settings, well open the Orbix exporter and have a look at our options here. So first enabled, well, enables it, then ignore rendering, we'll ignore the rendering and just do the export, which we mostly want. And then you can also check open and standalone and you have to link that in the settings. So if we go to the Octane settings under path, you can see I have already linked the Studio 2025.1 beta. As a last step, let's select the output path here. And if we open that, you can see that I tried around quite a bit before. I need to give a huge shout out to Dino Muik, who helped me yesterday evening to actually get it to work. As you can see, we already have a cloth rest position here, so let's choose this again. Yes, then select all of the options. One thing you need to be aware is to turn off your saving options here in the Cinema 4D dialog, as this would save black frames, which you don't want. 
And in the Octane render output, this will be disabled automatically if you have ticked Ignore Rendering. All right, so let's start the export. You can do that by hitting this button or hitting Rendering and wait for the standalone to open. Now to a couple of words that I don't say as often. Welcome to the standalone. First, let's check if the export was successful by clicking on the render target, which will load the scene here. And once this is done, you have a timeline here, which you can scrub and then see whether your animation was successful. And it seems like it was. Now, after five minutes, let's actually talk about the rest position. To do so, we need to get access to the scene exported polygons, which Cinema 4D exported into a ABC or a Lambic file. I'm not sure how this is going to be handled in the future, but in this version, we have to turn on the feature. So let's click on the ABC file and go to its options by clicking on the ranch icon. Having done so, on the bottom of the settings, there's the rest attributes turned off right now. If you click on the drop down, you have two options from file and from animation time. Since we exported an animation ABC file, we are going from animation time. This setting is dialed in in seconds. I find that a bit weird since even the timeline here is in frames. So I would expect frames here as well. At least we have accurate tooltips as I noticed right now. Let's leave it at zero for now and dive into the material. To do so, let's bring the node tree a little bit more into the center and double click on the ball material, which I forgot to rename. Don't be alarmed by the amount of nodes. This is just the cloth material we have here. I'm going to make this very easy and unplug the transmission and albedo here, then drag in the Octane logo and get this in as a grayscale image. If we now connect that to our albedo, we get what we expect. And this is a UV mapped logo that is moving with our cloth. Now, let's say for MoGraph reasons, we want to have a pristine logo despite our crumply cloth underneath. And this is of course where the rest position comes into play. For this to work, we need to reproject our logo. So in our texture here, instead of the mesh UV, we're going with our favorite XYZ to UVW. This leaves us with a black patch of cloth, but this is just the projection. So let's change that by going to the XYZ transformation here and set it to 3D transform. I already roughly know the values minus 90 in the first slot of the rotation, and then 0.2 for all the axes. This still looks wrinkly, and this is because we are projecting straight from the top. If we project from our camera angle, this looks much better. And I already know that this is around minus 60. So if we move that slowly, you can see it is aligning more and more. Here we go. Let's leave it just as this, and move it to the right side just a little to center it. Here we go. If I now move the playhead again, you can see the obvious thing, or more or less obvious, dependent on your experience. The projection stays the same while the cloth underneath moves. What we want is the projection staying fixed with this frame and then move with the cloth. And this is of course exactly where the rest attributes come into play. So let's click on this small magic button here and find out that it's not working. Well, actually it's working, it's just working the wrong way. If you remember in the beginning, we set our snapshot time to frame zero. This means the projection is going to be initialized here. But what we actually want to have is the projection to be initialized here. Let's go back to our ABC file, hit the ranch, and instead of second zero, let's type in 3.8 seconds, and you can already see that the discrepancy between frame numbers and seconds is leading to calculations that you need to do. So frame numbers here would be better. So if we now hit OK, then this should give us our pristine logo at this frame, or at least around that frame somewhere. Here, so frame 95 it was. And now if we unfold that, going to frame zero, you can see what we actually project in our frame 95. 
And that's the really cool thing. So if we go through the animation here, there's just one small frame where the logo looks pristine. And other than that, we see a distorted logo. Welcome to our bonus section, a small one, but a bonus section nonetheless. As you've seen the scene in the beginning, you might have asked yourself how I did that, because I clearly stated that the rest position only works on deformed points, and those are just objects moving about. Congratulations, you asked the right questions. Welcome to Cinema 3D and our ball pit. This is just the run-of-the-mill Gloner rigid body simulation. So if we go outside of our camera and move the timeline, you can see that. I just hit some of the collider objects for the animation for the rendering. Now, if we would export this through the Octane Orbix exporter, this would come in as single objects, just moving as the simulation goes. And this is not what we want or not what the rest position works with. So in order to get point transforms, there's an easy fix. We can take the cloner and then get a connect object going on. In the attributes, we can turn off weld because we don't need it. So now if we export, the Alembic exporter sees moving points in contrast to moving objects. For this, one thing is very important. In the cloner that we have actual objects, it wouldn't work with render instances or multi instances, since those, of course, have no points and therefore the rest position cannot work with them. Also, if you look closely, you can see small logos and the welding point here in the ball. I did that using UVs for the logo because they stay intact even if they are points and have no moving access. For the welding lines, I used vertex maps which also are bound to the points and therefore stay put. And this is how it's done. Of course, going over features that are highly nerdy and you cannot see the direct benefit for is always a risky video. But I can assure you, rest positions will be a godsend for a lot of situations in the future. So I thank you for watching this video. And hopefully you stay tuned for next time when we go over another feature, which will be probably Vectron Displacement. And by that, let's thank the people who made this video possible, my Patreons. Especially my 50 Euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen, Leon Studio TV and Soltan. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 Euro tier subscribers, Dui Jim. For the Thieves, Render King, Alessandro Bonchio, Alessio De Vecchi, Ami Sheetreed, BVR, Chris Fritschi, Christian Grajewski, Erbe Plus Academy, Eva Nilsson Tavares, Graham Bagnell, James Conkle, Joel Mackimer, John Edward, Chris Clemson, Matthew Hall, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Ralph, Raiko, Reshock, Reza Ansari, Shamos Johnson, Shiro 2049, Terry Wayne Ranson, and Yasin Rupp. Thank you all so very much for making it possible to produce those videos that you all enjoy. Welcome to the after credit scene. Thank you very much for sticking with me. So do you like the series of alpha and beta version features? I think if it's presented right, it will be interesting even if you cannot use it directly in Cinema 4D or Blender. As always, if you have any ideas for new tutorials beside that, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to make this short this week, so if you want to help me against the algorithm overlords, please post a pushpin emoticon to pin down textures in the comments down below. And now I wish you a good start into the week, an amazing week, and if you're watching this later, just a fantastic time. And I say goodbye and happy pinning. See ya.